I greet you with the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. The words of one of the great hymns of faith resonates in my spirit as we enter this time of devotion. Take time to be holy, speak often with the Lord, abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek. In this season of Lent, we journey with Jesus to the cross as we remember his sacrificial love for you, for me, for all of humanity. Oh, how deep is God's love for us. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Most holy, most wise, most giving, most caring, true God. We open our minds, hearts, and souls 
to you in prayer today. We come empty to your full fountain, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Lord, in this moment of devotion, and in times like these, we don't need another mountain, hillside, ocean, river, meadow, cornfield, wheat field, sunbeam or moonbeam. What we need is your love, for it is the thing that there's just too little of. Now, Lord, let us take that love that you give and accept one another as you do. Force us, O oh God, to see politicism, sexism, religiosity, racism with the eyes of Jesus Christ. For you are the living grace, the grace that is greater than all our sin. Throughout this week, grant to us your will, grant to us your peace, grant to us your forgiveness, grant to us all that we need, not so that we may be full, but so that we can provide service. O oh Lord, hear thou our pleading. Speak to our souls, cleanse and make us whole. Let us forever in thee abide. Lord, let us walk by thy side. This we pray by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to listen to the words found in Acts chapter 10, starting in verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God doesn't show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. You know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. May God add a blessing to the hearing and preaching of his word. Amen. In the book of Acts, we witness the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the earliest days of the church and in the ministry of Jesus' disciples. God's Spirit is always at work in unexpected and transforming ways and often beyond the ways that we can even think or even imagine. The Spirit of God gave Peter a vision, and in this vision he saw heaven opened up and something like a large sheet coming down with every kind of animal on it. And God says to Peter, go and kill and eat. And Peter says, I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. 
And then the Spirit of God speaks to him again and says, do not call anything impure that God may clean. God uses Peter's desire for the familiar, his hunger for food, and shifts it towards that which is unwelcome and unholy in him. And Peter is resistant. Like Peter, we too have the propensity to reject what is uncomfortable, what is unfamiliar, that which is different or what we cannot control or understand. Even when the Spirit of God is trying to show us something different. Like Peter, we resist. Three times God showed Peter this vision and all while this was happening, God's spirit is working through a man named Cornelius, a Gentile, who according to the law, Peter should have no association. But yet God's spirit moves Cornelius towards Peter. And it is through Peter's encounter with Cornelius that his life was changed forever. This was a significant and climactic moment in Peter's journey of faith. And Peter says, I now realize how true it is that God shows no partiality, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Friends, God has always been a God who does not show partiality. There are no box seats in the kingdom. But God had to convince Peter of the relevancy of this truth for his ministry and for his life. And if we were to be truthful with ourselves like Peter, God has had to or may have to convince some of us of some of the inconsistencies and contradictions within our own lives. You know, it is so easy and even comfortable to hold on to some of the long-held convictions and abstract truths about matters of race and inclusion without ever challenging them or even having them be challenged. Or with how we think or behave and how we incarnate such truths in our everyday lives. Like Peter, sometimes we can be resistant to what God is revealing to us, to how the Spirit is at work through others, how God sends people into our lives to enlighten our minds and open our hearts. Yes, people who we would sometimes rather avoid or ignore or even dismiss. But the good news is, is that God did not give up on Peter and God does not give up on us. God's spirit is always at work showing us God's vision for beloved community and ever moving us closer toward the likeness of Christ so that we can live out authentically our faith. A faith and a witness that recognizes God's divine image in all persons. A faith that is congruent with God's message of love and hope and justice and reconciliation. A faith that has the courage to call into questions systems and practices that perpetuate fear and hatred. A faith that denounces white supremacy and works to dismantle racism. A faith not afraid to ask hard questions, to uncover the truth, to expose injustices, a faith that does the right thing, the just thing, the loving thing. In public places and in private spaces, when you have nothing to gain and everything to lose. Dismantling racism, racial reconciliation, and racial justice, that is our work. Of discipleship and in this season of Lent as we journey with Jesus to the cross I invite us to lay before God all that burdens us and weighs us down the shame and the guilt of our past the grief and the pain we endure and the disappointments that make us weary and let us trust the grace and the mercy of God to convict us to forgive us, to heal us, to set us free 
to be a force of love for good in the world, a love that tears down barriers, a love that builds bridges of community, a love that embraces hope. Let it be so. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from a cow breeze a mountain in the cross in the cross be Some soul shall find rest beyond the river.